Hello again. Really quickly, everyone from my class, say hi. Hi! Today, I am starting to read as August again. Okay? This first chapter is called North Pole. The spud lamp was a big hit at the science fair. Jack and I got an A for it. It was the first A Jack got in any class all year long, so he was psyched. All the science fair projects were set up on tables in the gym. It was the same setup as the Egyptian Museum back in December, except this time there were volcanoes and molecule dioramas on the tables instead of pyramids and pharaohs. And instead of the kids taking our parents around to look at everybody else's artifact, we had to stand by our tables while all the parents wandered around the room and came over to us one by one. Here's the math on that. 60 kids in the grade equals 60 sets of parents and doesn't even include grandparents. So that's a minimum of 120 pairs of eyes that find their way over to me. Eyes that aren't as used to me as their kids' eyes are by now. It's like how a compass needle always points north, no matter which way you're facing. All those eyes are compasses, and I'm like the North Pole to them. That's why I still don't like school events that include parents. I don't hate them as much as I did at the beginning of the school year. Like the Thanksgiving Sharing Festival. That was the worst one, I think. That was the first time I had to face the parents all at once. The Egyptian Museum came after that. But that one was okay, because I got to dress up as a mummy, and nobody noticed me. Then came the winter concert, which I totally hated, because I had to sing in the chorus. Not one, oh, sorry, not only can I not sing at all, but it felt like I was on display. The New Year art show wasn't quite as bad, but it was still annoying. <laughs> they put up our artwork in the hallways all over the school, and had the parents come and check it out. It was like starting school all over again, having unsuspecting adults pass me on the stairway. Anyway, it's not that I care that people react to me. Like I've said a gazillion times, I'm used to that by now. I don't let it bother me. It's like when you go outside and it's drizzling a little. You don't put on boots for a drizzle. You don't even open your umbrella. You walk through it and barely notice your hair getting wet. But when it's a huge gym full of parents, the drizzle becomes like this total hurricane. Everyone's eyes hit you like a wall of water. Mom and Dad hang around my table a lot, along with Jack's parents. It's kind of funny how parents actually end up forming the same little groups their kids form. Like my parents and Jack's and Summer's mom all like and get along with each other. And I see Julian's parents hang out with Henry's parents and Miles' parents. And even the two Max's parents hang out together. It's so funny. I told Mom and Dad about it later when we were walking home, and they thought it was a funny observation. I guess it's true that like seeks like, said Mom. Okay, this next chapter is called The Augie Doll. For a while, the war was all we talked about. February was when it was really at its worst. That's when practically nobody was talking to us, and Julian had started leaving notes in our lockers. The notes to Jack were dumb, like, You stink, Big Cheese, and Nobody likes you anymore. I got notes like, Freak, and another that said, Get out of our school. Summer thought we should report the notes to Miss Rubin, who was the middle school dean, or even Mr. Tushman, but we thought that would be like snitching. Anyway, it's not like we didn't leave notes, too. Only ours weren't really mean. They were kind of funny and sarcastic. One was, You're so pretty, Julian. I love you. Will you marry me? Love, Beulah. Another one was, Love your hair. XOX, Beulah. Another was, You're a babe. XO, Beulah. Beulah was a made-up person that me and Jack came up with. She had really gross habits like eating the green stuff between her toes. And we figured we figured someone like that would have a real crush on Julian, who looked and acted like someone in a kid's bop commercial. There were also a couple of times in February when Julian, Miles, and Henry played tricks on Jack. They didn't play tricks on me, I think, because they knew that if they got caught bullying me, it would be big-time trouble for them. Jack, they figured, was an easier target. 
So one time they stole his gym shorts and played monkey in the middle with them in the locker room. <laughs> That's not funny. It's to Jack, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Another time, Miles, who sat next to Jack in homeroom, swiped Jack's worksheet off his desk, crumpled it in a ball, and tossed it to Julian across the room. This wouldn't have happened if Miss Potosa had been there, of course, but there was a substitute teacher that day, and subs never really know what's going on. Jack was good about this stuff. He never let them see he was upset, though I think sometimes he was. The other kids in the grade knew about the war, except for Savannah's group. The girls were at neutral the girls were neutral at first, but by March they were getting sick of it, and so were some of the boys. Like another time, when Julian was dumping some pencil sharpener shavings into Jack's backpack, which is so rude, Amos, who was usually tight with them, grabbed the backpack out of Julian's hands and returned it to Jack. It was starting to feel like the majority of boys weren't buying into Julian anymore. Then, a few weeks ago, Julian started spreading this ridiculous rumor that Jack had hired some hitman to get him and Miles and Henry. <clears throat> This lie was so pathetic that people were actually laughing about him behind his back. At that point, the boys who had still been on his side now jumped ship and were clearly neutral. So by the end of March, only Miles and Henry were on Julian's side, and I think even they were getting tired of the war by then. I'm pretty sure everyone stopped playing the plague game behind my back, too. No one really cringes if I bump into them anymore, and people borrow my pencils without acting like the pencil has cooties. People even joke around with me now sometimes. Like the other day, I saw Maya writing a note to Ellie on a piece of ugly doll stationery, and I don't know why, but I just kind of randomly said, Do you know the guy who created the ugly dolls based them on me? Maya looked at me with her eyes wide open like she totally believed me. Then, when she realized I was only kidding, she thought it was the funniest thing in the world. You are so funny, August, she said. And then she told Ellie and some of the other girls what I had just said, and they all thought it was funny too. Like at first they were shocked, but then when they saw I was laughing about it, they knew it was okay to laugh about it too. And the next day, I found a little ugly doll keychain sitting on my chair with a nice little note from Maya that said, For the nicest Augie doll in the world, from Maya. Six months ago, stuff like that would have never happened, but now it happens more and more. Also, People have been really nice about the hearing aids I started wearing. Um, I need to stop before guidance time because it's almost guidance time. So everyone say goodbye. Bye. Bye.